Good sessions always in with me in the air. If you a Hoover, I will not share. Gotta blunt that stuff, then I'm ruin up more. Gotta blunt that stuff, then I'm ruin up more. Thanks for rolling up. I'm Two Blunt Marley, and this is Certified Pothead. I'm smoking up nighttime, nighttime spliffs. You know we about to do Bird Club. We about to take a look at these cannabis conspiracy theories, which I like to call cannabis conspiracy theories. Tonight's theory involves the British royal family. When you think of the British royal family, you probably picture them having tea, attending fancy events, and dodging scandals like a corgi weaving through garden hedges. But what if I told you that the royals have been secretly running the world's biggest cannabis empire? That's right, peeps. While the queen's subjects are fussing over what she has for breakfast, it's not toast. It's toasted. The Windsors are busy puffing on the finest herb the empire has ever harvested. We're talking true high society here. An empire built on crowns, corgis, and cannabis. Or should I say can of biscuits and before you think this is all just a pipe dream let me roll out the history nice and slow like a friendly road joint from buckingham's finest stash here's a riddle for you i start your day with a splash of milk i calm your nerves when life's a bilk i come with biscuits and sometimes a scone what am i that the british love to own let's roll pun intended back to the 16th century when a british empire was spreading faster than marmalade on a crumpet. Sure, they sailed the seas for spices, textiles, and tea. But they also had a secret ingredient, cannabis. Officially, they called it hemp. They said it was for ropes and sails, but we all know the truth. They weren't just tying knots. They were tying Queen Elizabeth I. Wasn't just sending ships out to plant flags. She was planting seeds, and not just any seeds, highly valuable seeds. The East India Company sounds all buttoned up, but I'm telling you, behind all that tea trading, they were cultivating something far greener. And let's be blunt, the real reason the sun never set on the British Empire was that they were too buzzed to notice. Imagine those colonial ships sailing back to London, brimming with treasures like silk, spices, and stashed in the hold the royal reserve cannabis. They may have been navigating the high seas, but it wasn't just the ocean that was really high. And as they unfolded those crates, unfolded. I need to stop talking to y'all, bro. Unloaded those crates. You can bet there were more than just ropes made of hemp coming to shore. Here's another riddle for you. I'm small, fluffy, and low to the ground. In royal circus circles, I'm often found. I heard, I play. I'm quite in sight, with short little legs, but a heart that's bright. What am I? Fast forward to the 19th century, and you've got Queen Victoria, who, get this, was known to use cannabis for medicinal purposes. That's right, peeps. Queen Vic wasn't just ruling an empire, she was also blazing the trails in natural medicine. Female troubles, they said, well, Victoria's secret cure came from the royal garden, where the finest strains were grown. She might have been dealing with politics, but she was also dealing with pot ticks. Pot ticks, that is, that is corny. You've heard of Windsor Castle, but have you heard of Windsor Weed? Legend has it that the royal gardeners were cultivating plants that were, shall we say, more majestic than mere roses. You think those corgis are energetic because of their breed? Nah, bruh. It's the secondhand smoke from the royal spliffs. Windsor Weed was known to make one feel light as a royal feather, calm as a mid-afternoon cuppa. No wonder Victoria ruled for 63 years. She was in a state of eye composure. Here's another riddle for you. I'm served with roast, a puff and rise. Filled with air, a British prize. Crispy and golden, I'm quite a treat. What am I that completes Sunday's feast? By the time Queen Victoria was puffing away, the empire's cannabis empire had grown as vast as the tea plantations. Jamaica, India, South Africa. They weren't just Jews in the crown. Nah, bro. These were the cornerstones of cannabis. Think those tropical colonies were just about sugar and spices? Bro, it's time to spill the tea. They were blazing a trail of spice. It was dank. You know those sprawling royal estates with meticulously maintained gardens? 
Well, hidden behind those hedges and rose bushes are the finest greenhouses in the world growing not just tulips, but tulip-shaped buds of the highest order. The royal gardeners with their proper accents and good day, ma'am, are really the OGs of the cannabis cartel, trimming plants while keeping their lips tighter than a stiff upper lip. Meanwhile, as the queen's corgis trot around, the royal family is giggling behind closed doors, calling them their little pot hounds and it don't stop there peeps the empire's expansion wasn't just about ruling the land it was about high maintenance cultivation the royals were basically running the world's first organic cannabis network while sipping their afternoon earl gray who knew that behind those cucumber sandwiches was a conspiracy baked as well as the royal wedding cakes here's another riddle for you i take you from point a to b you spot me easily. Just wait and see. I'm big, red, and double the size. Who am I? The Taurus prize. Of course, the crown couldn't stop it just growing the stuff. They had to control. Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, bro, I'm going to stop talking, bro. I'm going to stop trying to say words to y'all. They needed to control the distribution, too. Enter Prince Charles, who's always talking to plants. We all thought it was because he cared about the environment. But the truth is, he's just chatting with his can of buddies, making sure the Windsor weed is top shelf. How's the claim with my leafy friends? That that was not a British accent. That's what Charles would say. The players would probably say, just high and dandy, mate. I got to work on my British. And let's not forget Harry's wild years moving to California. Please, he wasn't just escaping royal duty. He was chasing the chronic. California is known for his cannabis, and Harry clearly wanted in on the local action. He just continuing the family business, a high diplomacy. Diplomacy. Di dipl diplomacy. Okay, okay, that could have been right. Diplomacy. Diplom diplomacy. One at a time. One puff at a time. Now, you might wonder, how do the royals move all this product without raising suspicion? Simple, bruh. Diplomatic immunity. While the rest of us are sweating bullets at airport security over... A forgotten shampoo bottle. The Royals breeze through with diplomatic passages, packages filled with the best chronic strains known to humanity. But this is just a care package for the Queen, says a Royal aide. But inside is enough to fuel a weekend at Glaskenbury. All those Commonwealth tours, they aren't just for cutting ribbons and shaking hands. They're supply checks. And those Commonwealth summits, just a fancy name for Royal Cannabis Cartels and you board meetings. Behind the royal wave of the tea party chit chat, deals are going down. And the Queen's estate is probably growing greener than the Emerald and the Crown Jews. So where do we end up at, people? While the British public are fawning over royal weddings and baby announcements, the Windsors are quietly running the world's slickest cannabis operation. Don't be surprised if one day they launch their own line of products Perhaps Buckingham Blunts or Corgi Kush. After all, they can sell commemorative plates. Why not some royal rolling papers? As the royals always say, keep calm and carry a joint. I mean, carry on. And as the queen would remind us, always stay high above the fray. The answers to the riddles. Tea, Corgi, Yorkshire Pudding, Double Decker Bus. I'll see y'all in the next one, bro.